Hi there, Ian O'Regan here and welcome to the first in my new series of instruction videos where I'm going to give you some direction, some hints and tips about how to play some of my favourite songs to sing and play and hopefully you'll enjoy singing and playing them too. Not all of them are songs where the original is played on an acoustic guitar, although this one is. Where the original is an acoustic guitar song, I'll do my best to give you as accurate as possible a version of the original. And where the original was something else, I'll try and show you a way to play it that will be credible on the acoustic guitar and that you can take as is or develop yourself for your own playing style. So before I get into this one though, if you'd like these videos and you find them useful, please do subscribe and hit the bell below so that YouTube can tell you when I post more of them in future. So today I'll be showing you how to play Chris Stapleton's Whiskey and You, which he recorded to his 2015 album Traveller. It's a pretty straightforward song, but a really beautiful guitar arrangement. There's only a couple of tricky, stretchy bits, but I'll show you a couple of ways to deal with those if your fingers aren't quite up to the stretch yet. So let's zoom in and see how this goes. So the tuning for this one is drop D tuning. So we've taken the sixth E string and lowered it a full tone to a D. And then everything else is standard tuning, A, D, G, B, and E. And the song is in the key of D major. So the first verse starts with a really lovely little riff that goes the whole way through the song. It's played only on two strings, the fourth string and the sixth string. You're playing the fourth string with your index finger, you're playing the sixth string with your thumb, and you're alternating, mostly alternating between the two, picking first the index finger, then the thumb, the whole way through. We're going to start with the index finger, I'll show you what happens there. So we're starting on the second fret on the fourth string, sliding up to the fourth fret, and then picking again sliding up to the 5th fret, picking again, sliding to the 7th fret, picking again, sliding back to the 5th, picking again, then repeating that up to the 4th fret from the 2nd, pick again, up to the 5th fret, pick again, and then usually hammering on, you can slide again if you want to, but hammering on with your 3rd finger is more, more common, to the 7th fret, and then finally just one pick on the fifth fret, no slide. So we're going to play that along with the thumb. Now what's happening is that the index finger is playing on the downbeat, the onbeat if you like, as you count one, two, three, four. And then the thumb is playing the offbeats. So they're alternating between the two, except on the first beat of each bar where you're picking them both together. So I'll do it really slowly and it starts like, again, your index finger on the second fret and you're gonna slide as soon as you've picked that, but you're picking it and the thumb together and then immediately picking the thumb on its own afterwards. So one and two and three and four together and... slide back and then again pick them both together and slide then pick the thumb okay pinch them together slide and then pick with the thumb okay so to start the verse we do the first half of the introduction again so you're picking you're pinching and then sliding and then picking with the thumb doing that alternating and then when you get to this part, for the third bar, we go to a B minor chord, which is an A minor shape with these three fingers, and barring the second fret with your index finger. So we're using only four strings here, the second, third, fourth, and fifth string. We're not touching the first and the sixth strings. And the picking pattern is fairly simple. You're pinching two and five together, then picking four, three, four. So we get to that point, we pick one bar of that, one, and then lift the index finger off so that you're playing the fifth string using an open A, but all of the other three fingers stay the same, and use the same picking pattern. So once on the B minor, and then once on the B minor with an A bass, and then we get to the interesting part. Um, we're going to play a G chord, 
and the G chord because we're in open D tuning is the index finger playing the sixth, fifth and fourth strings. Okay, that's a G major chord. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide into that chord, then pick the sixth string immediately with the thumb. Then we're going to play the sixth and fifth strings together and we're going to hammer on using our third finger onto the seventh fret on the fifth string. And then immediately, and here's where the stretch comes. The little finger then goes to the 10th fret on the fourth string, and we're gonna pick the fourth and fifth strings together. So your third finger stays on the seventh fret and your little finger is stretching out to the 10th. And then your third finger lifts off and your little finger goes back to the ninth fret and pick the same two strings. So you get and I'll do that again really slowly. Slide in, pick with the thumb, hammer on on the fifth string, stretch out to the tenth fret and then slide back to the ninth and lift your third finger off. Now that's a big stretch and at this time of the morning that's a big stretch even for me. So an alternative way of doing it, that note that you're picking out here on the 10th fret on the 4th string is the same as the 5th fret on the 3rd string that you're already barring with your index finger. So you could play and then play the 5th with your thumb and play the 3rd string and then lift your third finger off and drop your little finger onto the ninth fret on the fourth string and play those two together. And you get exactly the same notes, but without the big stretch. Okay, so that's the easier way to get around that. Another easier way to do it, playing one note slightly differently, would be to slide in. And then with your two fingers, play the third and fourth string together, barred on the fifth fret. And then play the last two notes on the fifth and fourth string. So you get the same effect because you're getting that note and that note in there. The effect is exactly the same, one note slightly different. So any one of those three versions will work for the song. Pick whichever one your fingers can actually manage uh, and, and work from there. So to finish out the first verse then, we go back to a D major chord, which is the sixth string, second string, and the third string. So we're, we're playing, we would normally play a D shape like that, but because we're not playing the first string, we don't bother. Um, we're just playing the, third string on the second fret and the second string on the third fret. So we've played and we've got to, that's the difference. And again, the picking is pinching the second and the thumb one as we did before in the B minor, then go to an A chord. Now I play an A chord with my index finger. we do exactly the same thing, exactly the same finger pattern. Okay, and at the end of the first verse, we go straight back into the riff. If you listen to the song, you'll know exactly why that happens. Go straight back into the introduction riff that plays the first half of that. Plays the introduction riff again between the first and second verses. Second verse is exactly the same as the first, all the way through to... And then we go back to the D chord, A chord, 
And then to finish out the second verse before we get into the chorus, you play a D. That's the riff, I'll go through that really slowly. So we're playing, it's a D chord, we're pinching the second string and the sixth string. Picking the fourth string with our finger and then with our thumb, hammer on on the fifth string to the second fret and then pick the fourth string open again with your thumb and then play all three strings, two, three and six together and as you're picking those together, hammer on the index finger onto the second fret. So very slowly, two, three, four, So now we're into the chorus. The chorus starts on an A major chord and because we're playing the A major chord with our index finger, you have to play it with your index finger across the fourth, third and second strings here because you're, you'll need these other two fingers because you're hammering on. That's the first bar of the chorus. Okay, so you'll need these two fingers to hammer on. So you start by picking all four strings and then again with the thumb and then pick the second, third and fourth strings together with all three fingers. And as you do that, hammer on your second finger to the third fret on the second string and your third finger to the fourth fret on the fourth string. Now, if you do that in such a way that you leave this third string still ringing, you don't want to block it with your, with either of those two fingers as you do the hammer on. So once you've done that, pick the A string with your thumb and then pick the three strings again and pull off. That's the whole bar. Then we go to the G chord for a bar. So you're picking these three strings, six, five, and four on the fifth fret, eight times, four, and back to the same chord on the A, do the same thing again, back to the G again, same eight notes. Then we go to the riff while we're singing the third line. Helps to hide me from my pain. And then we've got a quick transition between a B minor, an A, or a B minor with an A bass, and then to the G and the little riff. So we're playing only one beat on each of those chords. And then we get out to the, that's the difference between whiskey and you. Go to the A, D, that's the difference. A, same picking pattern. And then we're back into the introduction between the chorus and this third verse. So the third verse is exactly the same as the second verse. Getting out into the chorus again, the chorus is exactly the same until you get to the end of the chorus. So when we get to the end of the chorus, we've got the B minor, A and D. Long gone, bitter truth. And then the first time through the last line, we get, that's the difference, D chord, between whiskey, which is the same as before. And now we go to a B minor, A and G transition very quickly. You. Okay, so B minor, pick, A, pick, G. And then back to the, that's the difference, to the A between whiskey and you. And the riff to get out of the song is slightly different than the riff we played before. It goes, and the timing is fairly important. One, two, three, four. We're playing one and hammering on onto the fifth fret. Sorry, hammering on to the second 
fret on the fifth string, picking the fourth string open, and then with your index finger on the second fret on the sixth string, bend half a tone, release, and back to the open D with a strum to finish. Now, if you can't make that bend, it's a difficult bend to do on the sixth string, you could always slide up to the third fret and back to the second. Has much the same effect, but the, the bend is better. So hopefully that's given you enough information to be able to piece the song together when you go and listen to the original. Or in the description below, there's a link to a performance video that I've done of the song. I don't do performances in the tuition stuff. It's all copyright stuff with, with YouTube. So I don't do the performance and the tuition in the same video. You'll find a pair of videos coming out uh, every so often when I do the rest of the videos in these series. If there's any songs that you'd like me to do a performance of or a, a tutorial on or both, um, please do mention it in the comments below. That would be absolutely fantastic and I'll see what I can do. And in the meantime, have fun with it and enjoy.